So we're just going to have a quick look at how we can use a combination of proxies and some of the proxy uh, features. In this case, we're going to use the fuzzer to create data in the application. In this case, I'm going to create users in the tracks application. So I'm running tracks from a Bitnami machine. Got tracks running here. I'm going to use a combination of the Charles proxy, which runs on Mac and Windows. And when you run it, it starts as your default proxy. And we're going to use Zap, which is a security test tool, the OWASP Z attack proxy, which runs under Java. So you need to have a GRE installed. Uh, you can download this from uh, the OWASP Zap website and it runs happily on Mac and Windows as well. And also I'm going to be using the Foxy Proxy standard plugin for Chrome just to make it easier to switch between uh, proxy settings. So let's get started. So I'm here logged in as the admin user in tracks. So what I'm going to do, let me just clear this, is I'm going to create a new user. So sign up new user, just to check whether this works. So let's call this guy Bob55. I'm not sure what I've created already. So let's not call him Bob, let's call him Alan. One, two, three, four, that probably exists. 5555, five, five, five. Alan5555. Five, 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 five. And I'll do password, Alan555. Five, five, five. Confirm password, Alan555. Five, five, five. Sign up successful for that user. Let's just double check. Let's not take the application's word for us. So 192.168 tracks login. And it was Alan555, five, five, five. Alan555, five, five, five. login. There we go. So it's created that user. What I want to do then is see whether I can take that post request that created the user and I can amend it to have a different user. So I'm going to go Alan5556 as the user ID, execute that. It's giving me a 302 back. It said it's created it. So let's, we had 225 users in the system there. We've now got 226. And just check in the incognito window. One, two. So that was Alan5556 with the password Alan555. Sign in. There we go. So we've got that user created. So what that means is I can use the GUI to send a create message, which I can capture in a proxy. And then I can edit and resend. So that means that the authentication token in here and all the cookies that are in here work fine for the next request. So I could in here just keep composing and editing a new uh, value. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use the zap proxy. So with the Z attack proxy, when it installs in window, sometimes if I run the zap.exe, the GUI is a little bit unresponsive. So I tend to run the zap.bat. To start zap. Now with the Charles proxy, it automatically hooks into the browser. With zap, I have to configure the browser to point to it. So let's find out where it's running. Tools, options, local proxy. So zap is running on port 8888. Now I have already configured Foxy proxy to have a proxy running on port 8888. So I will left click use proxy localhost 8888. So now if I do a refresh here, there we go. So that's showing up in OWASP Zap now. So I'm going to do the same thing and set up a user. So let's call this Alan8888 with the same password, sign up, sign up successful, incognito window, so that was Alan888, Alan888, sign him in, there we go, he's signed in. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to fuzz this request. So I select the request here. This is the request that we sent through. You can see it there. There's the username Alan888. And if I go up to Tools, Fuzz, I'm going to choose the post that we did to 
select this. Now, in the fuzzer, I'm just moving this over because I'm going to create some data. I will select which fields I want to fuzz. And in this case, I'm just going to select the username field. I'm going to say add a fuzz location for that. And I'm going to replace that with one of the strings that I enter in here. So what it's going to do is, given a list of strings, which are going to be the new username, it is going to issue a new request for each one of those strings and repeat this request, but replace Alan888 with whatever string I have in here. So say I write Alan8889, it would replace that in there. I'm going to create a bunch of users. How many should we create? Well, one of the easy ways of creating data is in a spreadsheet. If I select that, I've copied this in. If I select this and drag this down, you can do this in pretty much any uh, spreadsheet. It will automatically increment them. So if I copy and paste this now, We've got 22 new users there. I'll just add them in here. There we go. So in theory now, I should be able to say, use this string payload. There it is. Okay, that's the field we're gonna fuzz. Now I want you to just start fuzzing this. What are the options? So I'm gonna add a little delay of one second between each request because that will help the system cope. Then start fuzzer. We should start seeing the results come through here. So now it's making a request every second. Now if I hadn't put the delay in, some of these requests would fail because the system isn't responsive enough to handle that many requests coming through. But with the one second request, I'm creating all these users. So let's have a quick look. This is the original request. This is what I've just sent through here. Alan8889. This request, Alan8890. And in the response, we're seeing that it's a, created the user and it's telling us what page that is on. So in the main system, we've currently got 227 users last time we refreshed it. So if I refresh this again, We've now got 249. Now 249 minus 227 is the 22 users that we've created. But I can double check. So let's go down here. This is the last user that we created, which is Alan8910. New incognito window. One, two. And it was, oops. Alan8910 and the password was Alan8888. There we go. So I created a whole bunch of users by using the fuzzer in a debug proxy. That can be quite useful for setting up test data. I could create projects like this. Now it's not automated, but I'm doing it manually. I'm supporting my exploratory testing. When this approach works in your application, it's very, very useful.